be looking at how you can capture a signature on your website and save the image for later use. And to do this, we'll use a JavaScript library called SignaturePad. So to get started, you'll want to download the SignaturePad.js file. If you click on RAW, you can then just save this file to your vendor's directory. So to get an idea of what we're going to accomplish today, we'll have a standard page that you can access and any registered user can access. However, if you're a registered user, then you have access to the private content. However, before you can access this content, you must first accept the terms and conditions. So clicking on this will be automatically redirected to the terms and conditions, and it's required you to read this and then sign. If you hit save without first signing, then you'll be prompted to accept the terms and conditions. So once you do that and you hit save, it'll then sign the terms and conditions. And if you go to private content now, you'll then be given access to this section and then you'll see where you've entered your signature and then you'll also get your date timestamp. So let's first see how we have our application set up. So we are using device on the user's model and do note that I have manually set the controllers for each one of these. Then we also have a resource for documents, which we only have the new and create action. And we're overriding the URL path to terms and conditions. And then within our visitors controller, we have a private content and a index action. Our user model, we have the standard device set up, and then the user also has one document. The document, we are validating that the signature is present. And then we also have this set to belong to user. And in our application controller, we have a before action callback that verifies the terms acceptance, which is just a private method. We'll make sure that the user is signed in, which this is just a device helper, and the user also has a document. Otherwise, we'll redirect them to the new document path, which is our new terms and conditions for signing, and alert them that they must first accept the terms and conditions before performing any actions. So within our visitors controller, we have our standard callback for the before action authenticate user to make sure that the user is currently signed in. However, we only want to assign this on the private content action. We then have a skip before action, and then we're calling the verify terms acceptance, but only on the index action. That means that the user can freely go to the index action without first having to sign the terms and conditions. However, the private content, the user will have to first sign the terms and conditions before proceeding. And keep in mind that because our application controller has the before action callback for the verified terms acceptance, we will need to set the skip before action verified terms acceptance on our device controllers. So our first step is to go into the application JavaScript file and require the signature pad that should have been added to the JavaScript vendor assets. And then in the application CSS file, I just threw in some styling for our signature pad that we'll be using today. So within our documents.new view, we have our terms and conditions, and then we have a form at the bottom, which within the form, we're just building a new document because a user has one document and we're creating an input field for the signature, which is just gonna be a hidden text. And that'll be what captures the signature once we hit save. And then the important part here is that we're just setting an empty element for canvas. And then once we hit save, we have a class set for the signature pad save. Then we also have our clear button, which we have a class set to signature pad clear. So within our JavaScripts folder, I've created a signature.js file, and we'll load this on the Turbolinks load. And we're first setting our canvas, which we're selecting our canvas object within our view. And if the canvas object is found, so on pages that do not have the canvas, then you would want to make sure that you're not calling the following functions. We're first setting the canvas height and width to the offset. And I found this option kind of necessary just because of the way the canvas is rendered. And then we're calling on the window resize and initially we are resizing the canvas which this is just from the documentation they recommend doing and then we're setting a variable signature pad to create the new instance of our signature pad on the canvas when the user clicks clear it'll then clear out the signature pad and when the user clicks save it'll run the following event where if the pad is empty 
Then it'll alert the user that they must first accept the terms and conditions. Then it'll overwrite the form submission with the event.prevent default. Otherwise, if the signature is present, then we'll set our hidden input to the signature's data URL, which is going to just convert the signature over to a base64 image. And because we're not calling prevent default, it'll then continue to submit the form. So within our documents controller, we have our before action where the user must be authenticated. And we are also skipping the before action that the user must first accept the terms and conditions. So within our form, you saw where we had our current user.build document. And we really should just set that to our instance variable document. When the form is submitted, it'll call the create action. And the create action, we're setting our instance variable to the current user.build document. And then we're passing in the document params, which should just be the signature. And the document params method is just a strong params method to allow certain attributes. Make sure that you do not include your user ID and you also do not include your signed on if you're creating a date timestamp. Rather, the only thing that you want to permit is the signature attribute. We will then manually set our signed on date timestamp so we know when this is set. And then if the document has been saved, then we'll redirect to the root URL, letting them know that the terms and conditions have been accepted. So with all that set up, we can sign up for a new user account. And if we go to our home screen, then we see our public information, which is just the visitor's index action, will display successfully. However, going to the private content, it'll redirect us to the new terms and conditions. And once you sign the terms and conditions and hit save, it'll redirect you to the root URL and you can then access your private content. So if you look at this schema for our application, I want to make sure that you understand why I'm making the choices that I have made here. Typically, you'll never want to store a image within your database. However, in this case, I have a table users. It would have been a big mistake to add my signature into my users table, even though that's very possible because a user has one document and a document belongs to the user. However, once our user table grows, maybe not all users will need to accept the terms and conditions. Maybe only one user for a company instead of every single user. So then you have a wasted field and that binary attribute will just grow and grow and grow and create a massive user's table. So segregating this out into its own, then we can prevent this kind of inflation on our user's table. However, you still should look at some other method for storing your signatures because storing them as a base64 within your database is never really ideal. However, depending on your application, that may be sufficient if you are not expecting too many users or if the number you users actually signing will be relatively small. However, you're looking to capture a lot of signatures for a user and not just like a TOC, then you may want to think about moving the signature over into an image file, just decoding the base64 and converting it over to an actual image and using something like paperclip, carrier wave, or refile to handle the storing of that image. So if you need a lightweight option for capturing signatures within your application, definitely check out Signature Pad. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.